Hey you guys and happy Monday. Tonight we are going to be discussing or rather I'm going to be sharing with you um, how I handled Easter breakfast with my family and how I managed to stay within my own personal eating guidelines for myself and what I did to kind of honor what I am doing with my intermittent fasting. So if you are new, welcome. My name is Diane and for the past 25 years I have been helping Women find nutritional plans and fitness programs to help them look and feel their best and live their most authentic life. And for me, in the last couple of years, that has been done with intermittent fasting. So we had Easter breakfast yesterday like most people have. I know a lot of people either celebrate breakfast big with their family or they celebrate a nice dinner celebration, usually before or after church. And um, we did the same. Uh, my husband actually worked yesterday, so we had planned to just kind of meet him somewhere and um, enjoy breakfast together. And so the place that our family picked is called Lolo's Chicken and Waffles, and it's a really amazing place to have chicken and waffles. Buttermilk waffles, like old-fashioned style, deep-fried, battered chicken, grits, like you name it, you can have it there. And... Um, and so we went and we met to get, we met him and we all sat down to eat and I was fasting and I knew that if I ate buttermilk pancakes and deep fried chicken at eight o'clock in the morning that I would have a horrible rest of my day. And so I handled the situation just like this. I took a bottle of my Pellegrino uh, carbonated water with me. I took some stevia packets. And I told the family, like, you know, I hope you guys don't mind, but I'm not going to eat. I'm just going to kind of enjoy my time with you. And, of course, they understand why it is that I fast, and they remember what it was like when I wasn't feeling well. And so they completely honored my um, request to not want to eat. And everyone ordered their food. And when <laughs> the waitress came to me, because I just told her, you know, take my order last, knowing what I was going to say. And, um... And when she came to ask me what I wanted to eat, I just asked for black coffee. And she said, "Are you? do you want anything to eat? And I said, no, I'm, I'm not going to eat. And I could tell she was like super like awkward, felt really awkward about it and kind of felt a little bit, you know, uncomfortable because I guess it's her job. You know, she's supposed to be taking my order and I'm not eating. And, and probably thought it was weird that my family is eating and I'm going to just kind of sit there. So I just kind of made light of it and I was like, oh, I'll probably just eat something off their plate or whatever to kind of like make her feel comfortable about the fact that I chose not to eat. Um, and so then she brings everybody's food and she brings me a... Uh, you know, an empty plate so that I could, you know, take off their plate and eat if I wanted to or whatever. But I didn't, and I just sat there and enjoyed, you know, I think I had two amazing cups of coffee with some stevia in it and drank a bunch of water and totally just cherished the time that I had with my family and totally loved that we were able to spend some time with Michael. And we just sort of did our thing. And I went home and felt great. Didn't have any regrets about the day. Broke my fast. Um, I, I think I broke it like later in the afternoon, like maybe three or something like that, with what I always break my sh my fast fast with with my superfood shake. Um, so I had that with some ripple milk in it, and I tried the new cafe latte formula, which is amazing. And I felt super energized, and it you know sustained me till we had dinner last night, and then for dinner last night we had some salmon and some roasted potatoes and some asparagus. So yes, even though it was Easter Sunday, we still ate pretty close to the way we always eat and didn't go off track. And today I woke up and I felt amazing and I have nothing to make up for. I have no wasted time. I don't have any regrets. And um, and felt really good about making that, that choice because eating at Lolo's Chicken and Waffles is um, it's an amazing experience if you can handle it. But my philosophy in life now is nothing tastes as good as amazing feels. And I know if I would have had some buttermilk pancakes or buttermilk waffles and some deep fried chicken that, and I, who knows what kind of oil they use, probably soybean oil, that I would have had probably a very horrible entire week this week and nothing tastes that good to me anymore. And so I just had my coffee and I enjoyed my family and we had some great conversation and I... I honestly felt 
like super empowered about my morning and didn't feel like I was missing out on anything or didn't feel like I was being neglected. And I can honestly tell you that that's taken a long time for me to get to that point because last year I probably would have cried about it. Um, not being able to eat with my family or not being allowed to or whatever and really changing the way I think in my own mind and how I value a really good day, a good a day of feeling great as opposed to a day of feeling like who because I decided to eat food that I knew was going to make me feel bad. I mean, that's a great feeling to have and it, it took me a really long time to get there. So if you're one of those women who's struggling with always kind of going backwards on holidays or feeling like you're missing out because you're making food choices for yourself that you know are going to make you feel great and look great and, and not have any wasted time, you know, following a meal because you're feeling bad. I can tell you that you know it, you, when you get to that point where you can make those decisions where you put you over food, it's a pretty amazing feeling. And I didn't miss a thing. You know, like what people decide to eat on Easter or what people decide they're going to eat as traditions on holidays, that's their decision. And and we are now a family who kind of just makes our own. And my kids didn't think it was weird that I didn't eat. They didn't feel like they missed out on anything because I chose to be there and be present with them and I wasn't sulking about it and I wasn't feeling bad about it. And I think that they really value the fact that I put how I want to feel over food and that means they don't have to watch me have a bad day either. So hopefully I'm teaching them something, especially my daughter because I'm sure she'll have the same food issues that I am having when she gets older. And so hopefully she'll be able to remember those times and know that, you know, a holiday doesn't have to be around food and a holiday doesn't necessarily have to be around food that's not going to make you feel your best. A holiday is meant to be a special time and whatever is celebrated for that particular holiday and that you should really focus on that and people and try to steer away from the food aspect of it if it's just not the thing that's going to make you feel your best. So I know I asked a question today on who ate candy and who didn't eat candy and who was feeling bad today and who was feeling great today. and. Um, it was nice to see that we had like a good 50-50 and even for the people who um, felt like they had kind of an icky start to their day because of some food choices they made over the weekend, they had a plan to get out of that, which is another amazing um, empowerment thing that we women are creating for ourselves. Because I always say, like, if you fall off track, like, that's life. Life's going to be thrown at you. It's going to make you fall off track. It's going to throw you a curveball. It's going to make you kind of sidestep what it is that you really say you want for your life. And that's okay. Like, we don't have to, you know, dwell on that for too long as long as we have an exit strategy. So just make sure that if you are going to indulge in stuff and maybe eat those old favorite foods that you used to have um, that now make you not feel your best, then just have an exit strategy. And so what I always advise on the day after a food um, intolerance sort of experience is to just um, create a fasting opportunity for your body so that it can kind of burn through all that stuff very quickly. Remember, anything that you put in your body that's going to create an insulin um, um, sort of release and a glycogen buildup, it's going to burn that glycogen first. So you want to make sure that you create a fasting opportunity so you can burn through all that get through all that fat and just really get that body churning and burning off all that extra stuff that you might have consumed that's not like making you feel your best and just let it cycle through a little bit faster so create a fasting window for yourself make sure you drink lots of water mineral water if at all possible that'll kind of just help keep your electrolytes up and kind of get you flushed out as well and then um, when you enter back into your eating window make sure that that time is when you're actually um, putting those real whole one ingredient type foods in your body and go for fat. Go for high um, whole fat if at all possible because that will keep you satiated which means you won't binge on some things that maybe are laying around the house that might need to be put in the trash can sooner than later. Um, your kids are probably over whatever jelly beans and malted eggs and peeps and all that kind of stuff you have laying around. Just ditch it one day when they're at school. They won't mind. Um, and for our kids this year we got them Fitbits. So um, we have very little candy at the house, and most of it was just, you know, traditional stuff. So that Easter Bunny kind of does little things. And so we went for the the more material things than just a quick fix candy <laughs> Easter basket, and they seem to really appreciate that. And it's, you know, promoting them having a Fitbit and doing some things with it and tracking my daughter's, tracking her heart rate and her steps and all that kind of stuff. So 
Um, that was kind of a fun thing for them to watch. And she said that was her favorite Easter gift ever. Like, who knew all these years you're feeding your kids candy and stuff when they would probably rather have some other things anyway. So just ask them maybe, you know, some things that they want to have and see if you can kind of keep that candy and stuff out of the house. So let me see if I have any comments on here. Um, let's see, let's see, let's see. Hey, Stephanie, what's up, girl? Hope you're feeling better. Um... Let's see, um, I can't see the comments on here. Hey, Ann, what's up? Deanna, okay, I have wasted time. Southern food is so good, but I have to get a grip, though. Yeah, Stephanie, why don't you see if you can kind of make your own version of some Southern food that's a little bit healthier, and then maybe you can stay with some of your Southern traditions without having to kind of sacrifice the day of not feeling good. May not be where you're at, but I noticed today how I was able to get to my eating window a lot easier and ended in an hour before with no problem. Awesome, and that's just called experience with fasting and eating windows. You're getting good. Hey, Michelle, what's up? I had some sweets, but felt in control and didn't overdo it. And that's awesome. Um, and if it doesn't make you feel bad, there's nothing wrong with having sweets. But for me, like those, all those chocolates and stuff have the soy in it, and it just knocks me off my feet for days. I toss stuff when my kids are at school. They, yeah, they have no clue. Like seriously, like we take Halloween candy, and we just dump the whole thing in the trash. Um, yeah. So Stephanie, I would I would work on doing some um, southern cooking uh, alterations and see if you can create some southern cooking that um, maybe isn't going to send you over the edge. And then you can start you can start your little family unit with some new home cook traditions, and they can carry on some things for their own life as well. Uh, we always say that our kids are going to be um, in for the shock of their lives when they start dating and get married and they go to their in-laws house and stuff and like there's a there's a whole turkey presented at thanksgiving because we don't do a whole turkey we do like a turkey breast and we keep everything very minimal we rarely have leftovers at thanksgiving we do the same thing for christmas we're very minimal we have a big salad and a turkey breast and you know we don't do all the heavy cream stuff and the heavy butter stuff and all that so um we don't do a ham our kids are probably going to be freaked out when they go to someone else's house for a holiday because they're going to see how, how the real people do it. And, uh, you know, we're just, we just don't make it about food. Um, it's just never really been our thing. Uh, so we don't have to worry about all that kind of stuff, leftovers for days and all that. So I hope you guys had a great um, Easter. Like I said, you know, practice some of those empowering decisions that you can make for yourself. And if you're at a place that the food isn't going to be the best for you or you're going to be like, not only was the food not the best for me, but I would have had to break my fast way early and that would have made me feel bad too. So I was able to keep within my fast because I took my carbonated water. I drank black coffee. I brought my own stevia. So I was at no risk of ruining anything that I am working for. And I was at no risk of having a bad day today because everything that I did was right in line with what my lifestyle is and what I've created for myself. And I just don't allow, allow any exceptions um, that are going to kind of put me behind. So I had a really great day. And um, I know a lot of you reported in that you did too. So hope everything's going well with all your fasting. I know I'm getting a lot, oh my gosh, so many great comments from women reaching out saying that they are starting to incorporate fasting and within days are seeing some great, great changes in their body. They're seeing some great changes in their moods. They're feeling like their hormones are starting to settle out. They're losing weight, even when weight is not really the goal that we're shooting for with intermittent fasting, especially with the women that I work for, work with. Um, we are shooting for just feeling better and having better control over our eating windows and our fasting windows and how we're sleeping and our hormones and the weight loss stories are blowing me away. And so keep them coming, keep sharing what it is that you're doing with your intermittent fasting, keep sharing the success that you're having. And the more we share and the more open we are, about our experiences, the more women we can help and we um, we just might be able to do some really great things for our little tribe of women, especially our tribe of aging women and can help us you know, feel better as we begin to age instead of feel like we're falling apart and really in 
you know, really incorporate what it, I really, my true passion is, and that is to help women look and feel their best and live their most authentic life. And that is so easy to do if you're feeling good, and it's so easy to do if you're confident in your own skin, and it's so easy to do if you can feel empowered in social situations, and if you can feel empowered around food. And food has been that thing that is, has haunted us for so many years as women, especially young women. And if we can do it, then we can model that for those generations coming up behind us and imagine what we can do for our young daughters, imagine what we can do for you know our, the women around us and how we can really change a whole society of women and really help eliminate some of this unnecessary illness that we have and just some unnecessary stages of life that we go through that we just don't feel our best. And we can turn that all around and really start walking around with our heads high and feeling confident and really loving the life that we're living. And, and that, to me, oozes out of women when we are living that way. And so I hope that um, you'll continue watching. I hope you'll continue commenting. I hope you'll continue sharing. And if you are a woman who's sort of experimenting with intermittent fasting and you haven't found your little sweet spot yet, or you just kind of want to join a community and see what it is that we're doing within our little group, definitely feel free to reach out to me or I always put the links below to my next group. We start May 6th. It's filling up fast. I think we have less than 10 spaces left. Um, so if you are thinking about jumping in and you kind of want to just see what it's like to be in an environment where you kind of just slowly learn at your own pace, I, I release a new lesson every day during the group, then definitely jump in. Um, we have a great group of women. The women are super helpful with each other. We're all making new friends around the world, um, and it's a lot of fun. So definitely don't be afraid to kind of look into that if that's something that you think you might benefit from. And if you find that you're struggling with intermittent fasting and you're just not finding the results that you hear other people talking about, just jump in with us. Um, the women who were in the same exact position that you were are finding results within three or four days of the group. So it's usually just a couple tweaks that you got to do uh, to get yourself back on track and then you'll see those results. So I know, Anne, you are like my, my biggest cheerleader and I so appreciate you. Thank you so much. Yeah, Michael, the testimonials have been amazing, 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 amazing. All right, so you guys, I'm going to jump off of here and let you guys um, enjoy the rest of your evening or day, depending on when it is you're jumping in here. As usual on Facebook, um, if you catch this on a recording, definitely feel free to leave me a comment. I always go back and review those. And if you're catching this on YouTube, again, leave a comment. I always appreciate those, and I personally answer all your comments so that you know that I see that you're there and that I appreciate you. And if you know of a woman who might might be suffering from some midlife crisis kind of thing, some hormone imbalances, maybe some unwanted weight gain that she can't shed, or just a general overall feeling of kind of being lost and not knowing where to go to get her body back and kind of her life back. Definitely feel free to share this video, or any other videos that I post. That I post, um, I say that the more women that we invite into this world and the of intermittent fasting in this community of very supportive and helpful and loving women then we're all just going to be better for it in the long run. So thanks so much for jumping in tonight, and I will see you guys tomorrow at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time.